For this video I needed to cut some extruded polystyrene down to size so I'm using the 16 inch 3D Pro scroll table by Hotwire Foam Factory which they were very kind and sent me to try out in this video and in other videos. I'll be showing some other uses later on in this video and in some future videos as well but for this part I'm just wanting a very straight clean edge so I moved the straight edge back on the table clipped it in place and then you just allow the blade to do the cutting you don't have to force it through and it does some very nice straight edge there that's just one of the uses of this table now i'm just going to mark out here the basic shape of the river delta that i want and i'm just using a blunt knife or actually there is a, a retractable knife with the blade fully retracted and now here I'm using the router blade for the 16 inch table. If you go the next size up, I believe you get an extra arm on this table so you can actually link the wire in between the two arms that stick out. There you can see the first brass arm there. I think you get a second brass arm and you can actually use the router e more easily. On this one, I had to use this Bit with the foam on its side. Um, if you get the bigger table I think you can lay the foam flat down and carve into it that way and in fact I can imagine that making it a lot easier. This is um, a very good table for cutting 3D objects for say making cylinders etc um, and it's very good for cutting straight edges and it's also good for cutting angled edges um, what it possibly isn't so good for is doing this kind of work however if you went the next size up or if they were able to send you an extra rod then it would be absolutely fantastic so what I ended up actually doing here was using their hand routing tool which is another fantastic bit of kit and they sent me this a little over a year ago I believe it was that long ago um, for use on some of my early vids, so they've really supported me over the last year and I'm very grateful to them for that. Um, hopefully I have put their tools and equipment to good use. Um, but here I just wanted to create a fairly tight loop at the end of the wire. You can bend the wire into any shape you like, as you can with the routing tool on the routing wire on the uh, scroll table. Um, make sure that the wires don't touch. Um, I just wanted to carve out a general shape here. You, as you can see, it's fairly rough. Um, it doesn't have to be, but I was doing it fairly quickly, just kind of making it up as I go along. Um, so I'm using some sculpting mold, which I mixed with a relatively thick paste. And I was always going to do this anyway, because I wanted to sculpt in some islands into the delta. And again, I say it in all of my videos, but don't make your sculpt mold too thin because it will take forever to dry. I make mine into a relatively stiff paste. Stiff enough so that it actually piles up into mountains and you can sculpt out little embankments with it here. But you'll see in a minute that I actually changed my mind about the shape of this delta because I realised it wasn't quite intricate enough. So there we go, that's my little transition to show that I changed my mind after having painted it. That's actually spray paint. You can see it's eaten into the foam slightly there. I wasn't bothered about that. Um, I didn't need it to be uh, smooth. Uh, but I'm using the Hot Wire Foam Factory's engraving tool here just gently at first to carve in a bit more of an intricate kind of watercourse basically. Some little tributary rivers etc. And you can use it side on to sculpt out or carve out bigger bits. And then where I had to cut through the sculpt mould, I just used uh, an old X-Acto blade. And that's what it looked like after I'd had a good go at it. The white you can see is the sculpt mould, obviously. Now I'm using some product by Knock. This actually simulates, this is the first time I've seen this product, and it simulates granite that it's supposed to. And I thought it would be a bit like sculpt mould, but it turns out it's a bit more just like grout, really. Um, it has a bit of a different property and it. it's a bit stickier, a bit thicker, a bit more grainy um, and you can build it up, there we go, a nice out of focus shot for you um, and you can build it up into mountainous, mountainous kind of landscapes on this kind of scale I suppose as long as you smooth it out with your finger 
on something like HO scale or, or bigger scales you could um, you know use it for quite nice close-up rock work um, but I'm just using it here on uh, this delta to create a hilly rocky landscape and it also lends a nice kind of under color as well so once I've done it that was that now I'm going it was uh, going over with some black gesso so if I missed anything with the black gesso here the the gray uh, wouldn't show through quite as much as the white um, and that would it also be quite nice because later on often when you apply these washes and this is just a white wash it uh, takes away some of the gesso if you haven't let it dry completely as you can see I'm very impatient when it comes to these things so the grey underneath may actually show through some of the gesso but that's okay because it's grey and it's granity colour um, and that's the kind of effect that I was after here so I suppose you could say oh I should have left it but then I should have left it as the grey and not bothered with the gesso but I'm going to be painting over this so much that it was just easier to paint over it, give it a good solid undercoat all over. And now I'll just go over the water with some kind of aquatic colours. Uh, I've forgotten what this one's called, Lagoon or something, it's very cheap acrylic. Um, and I watered it around quite considerably and I'll just do a few more highlights. This again you'll see later on that I go over this again, I keep changing my mind throughout the entire course of this model. Um, so all these highlights that I apply now mean nothing at the end of the day. I'll go over the rocks with some pumice um, mix. This is a, a, a paste by Vallejo. Um, that actually dries pretty clear. The European thick mud, I just stipple it on over the top to give it an appearance of earth. And that's where I'm going to be putting trees, etc. So I don't want trees growing out of bare rock. And now I apply some Vallejo black wash. This is a game wash, and this just seeps into or rolls, and drips into every little nook and cranny, and really highlights the uh, the craggy look of it all. And then I just brush over the top of that some brown grout. I used to use soil and beige grout to get the right colour. I wish a lot of people do that, um, but I just found some beige, uh, some brown grout, and I thought, yeah, I'll just use that instead then. And then I go over that with, now this is a bit of a messy process, as you can see it's very dusty. I'm using some green weathering powder to simulate the grass because you could use the foams, you could use all sorts of things, but nothing's going to be the right scale. Uh, so now, because uh, I've gone over it with so much weathering powder, it's got everywhere. I go over the, the water again with another coat. Now I'm using some white weathering powder here just to highlight the edges of the rocks. It looks extreme at the moment, but you keep brushing it and brushing it and it ends up looking really quite natural. And once again with another layer of the paint over the river. This really was a trial and error thing. I, I hardly ever plan my models, to be honest. When I start making them, I think, how am I going to do this? I plan it in my head and never write anything down, never draw anything. And it just ends up how it ends up. Um, and I just keep going until it looks all right. It's probably not the best way to work. Uh, some masking tape uh, to make a dam um, for the, the resin I'm about to pour. I'm using CFS's water clear epoxy. This has to be poured in equal parts resin to hardener. So I use plastic cups. I always say that you can wash out these or rinse them out with some isopropyl alcohol but I don't tend to bother in my videos I do in personal projects and things so I don't tend to bother using the old cups in videos because you can hardly see what's going on because they're quite they get quite fogged up um, and they don't look very nice um, and it may look like they're just filthy um, so once that they're, they're poured in together you put a bit of um, I put a bit of game wash in there that's blue um, it, that was an edit it actually takes a lot longer to mix these um, I wanted to make it even darker so I added a bit more you have to stir it for a good two minutes very slowly so it's not to introduce too many bubbles but we will get rid of the bubbles in a bit and then pour the resin go over a little bit at a time take it take your time with it uh, I realized at this point that I wasn't gonna have enough resin and also it wasn't really dark enough so I was going to have to do another pour later on. We 
we'll see about that. But I kept going and then decided what I wanted was this kind of swirly pattern in the water which you often get in these amazing satellite images of River Delta. So I used some more of the game wash and I just dropped it in and swirled it around until I had the look I was after. It doesn't take too long to get a really nice look but it does keep kind of blooming within the resin so you need to keep working it and working it and you go over with a blowtorch or a whatever you've got you know whatever you've got that creates a bit of a flame because that actually uh, gets rid of the bubbles um, and now here's another transition to show another mistake I made this one was basically you going to my go to Mod Podge gloss to create a very very subtle pattern of waves but it didn't work out it didn't look nice which is another reason why I wanted to add some more resin later on uh, but before I did that I was still in I was still in denial about that so I uh, put some glue on top of the uh, the hills here and started adding Woodland Scenics coarse turf uh, the reason I did that was because did you just hear my shoulder click then it was pretty nasty um, the reason I did that is because this grade of turf simulates low-lying trees very nicely at this scale. Um, you can get right up close to it and it still looks really, really intricate. And now with some isopropyl alcohol, lots of people ask me why I do that. Well, you drip it over, it's a wetting agent. Um, you could just use what they call wet water, which is water with dish soap in it. But it allows the glue, which is watered down Mod Podge or watered down matte medium or whatever, to soak through. Uh, otherwise it all just balls on top and now here I go again with the next pour of resin uh, a much thinner round this time and you can see also around the edges there I started to apply a bit of white as surf and I didn't like that either so um, I'm glad I did this next resin step here because it brought that level down somewhat it also improved the kind of depth of the whole piece the water suddenly came to life and I decided I'd add some more swirls to it and not just the blue but also a drop of white this time and that white took a lot of working in it looks awful to begin with you think oh my god what have I done but and you think, oh look at this I mean it's a mess I was panicking at this point thinking what have I done again I don't plan these things this could have written off the whole thing. Do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> That's the, the motto here. But as I worked it out, and you can see there, it actually ended up looking really nice and subtle once I'd really, really worked it out. And I was gonna go over this now with some pouring medium, and I was just pointing out there that it's not quite brilliant gloss. Because this is a, such a glossy finish, this resin, when you look at these you know, a river from above, it's never a complete gloss, it's got a sheen to it because it's got tiny ripples on it. And this just takes that gloss down just a touch and it also adds a little bit of texture to the water surface. I'm going to be adding a few ripples later on and in a different way that I've ever done it before. But basically, that just took the edge off the gloss and then I go over again with it this is a mixture of coarse turf this is some burnt grass I believe and some mid green um, which I just had mixed up from previous models where it overspilled and I picked it all up together and, and it formed a nice little mix uh, now diorama precipe again um, Fabio sent me some fabulous no pun intended um, stuff and among it is this kind of uh, these branches that have uh, foam on the minute they're a bit like uh, woodland scenics finally foliage um, but they come in many different varieties and they're wonderful products and I would recommend him wholeheartedly this is the first time I've ever used this to create waves this is a gloss embossing glue pen and this is brilliant gloss but you can really build up a nice water texture it's got a feeling of kind of um, like a pouring medium to it or a glazing medium perhaps uh, but it retains its shape pretty nicely uh, and I just push it around with 
the brush until I'm happy with the general wave shape. Now you can see it's really sparkling off the surface there. It looks really, really wonderful. I was very happy with that finish and I'm going to be employing that again for other models. I mean, you can get it as fine or as coarse as you like. And there you can see how the water shines in the sun with that glossy wavy surface it really worked out nicely um, I hope you like this video it's only a rough job really because I'm planning a few bigger projects and this was like almost like a practice piece but it does show you some good techniques that you can use and it does end up being quite effective especially with the swirly kind of resiny look to it all I hope you enjoyed it anyway Thank you ever so much for joining me as usual, and I'll catch you next time. Cheerio!